year old what is her name her best friend Angela Andrea uh, Alana I was not close everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my part three out of three wrap up for May 2020. I read a total of 18 books so if you guys are interested in part one and two I'll leave those links down below. These are the last six that, that I read so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows 16-year-old Brie Jackson, who is an up-and-coming rap star. She takes after her late father, who was a hip-hop legend. Her family has been struggling to pay their bills for quite some time now, and then her mom loses her job, which makes times a little tougher. Then she ends up winning her first rap battle at the local ring, and she starts getting a lot of attention from her father's ex-manager. Brie knows that she needs to be careful around this man, but she also really wants to help pay her family's bills, so she ends up writing a song with his help, and the song ends up going viral, but for all the wrong reasons, and it's like the story of that. Although I didn't like this as much as The Hate You Give, I still really loved this story. I flew through it in two sittings. I could not put it down. I loved each and every one of these characters. I think that Brie was such an interesting complex character. She was so headstrong and always stood up for what she thought was right and although she does make a lot of mistakes and she isn't perfect, she always learned from those mistakes and became a better person because of them. I really liked the family dynamics in this. I loved Jay and her relationship with her two kids. I loved Aunt Pooh. I think that she was such a great addition to the story. I laughed every time she was on page but I really wish that she got the help that she needed. I loved the siblings relationship between Trey and Brie as well. I think that it was really well done. Also really liked the friendship between Sunny, Malik, and Brie as well. I really like how they had fights and they wouldn't talk to each other for a while but they would always end up having that conversation when all parties were ready to have that discussion and I love how even when they were mad at each other they would still stand up for each other no matter what. The book talks about a lot of difficult topics such as substance abuse, recovery, poverty, gun and gang violence, racism in such an amazing way. I also really liked the discussions about sexism and the double standards that women face in the music industry. I think that that was also a really great aspect of the story as well. So I highly recommend you check this book out if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have since literally everybody and their mother has read this book, and I'm always just super late to the party, but the next three books that I read were all for the contemporary -athon, so if you guys are interested to hear more of my thoughts on them then I'll leave the link to the vlog down below if you really want to check it out. It's not that entertaining, it's a lot of me just talking about Animal Crossing, but if you want to look it's down below. Um, the next book is Tweet Cute by Emmy Lord and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This is an enemies to lovers romance between two teenagers who are running Twitter accounts for their family businesses and they end up having this Twitter war about a grilled cheese recipe. I like this a lot more than I originally thought I was going to. I am not the biggest fan of romance contemporary books. I'm more of a thriller reader so when I do find a contemporary book that I'm digging. I'm super into it, but I really liked Pepper and Jack equally. I really liked how they're both trying to navigate their family businesses while still trying to follow their own dreams as well at the same time, and I also really liked the family dynamics in this, not only between the parents and the children, but also the siblings as well. I really like the banter between Pepper and Jack, not only in their tweets, but also in their face-to-face -face interactions as well. They had me laughing out loud a lot of the time. I really liked the friendship that developed before their romance, and I really liked their like slow circle around the romance. I think that this was more of a like enemies to friends to enemies to friends to lovers kind of situation going on, and I was a big fan of it. I think that the enemies to lovers is like one of my favorite tropes on the romance genre so I was here for it. Overall super cute, fluffy, quick read. I'm also super disappointed in myself that I didn't realize that their couple name was Pepper Jack, like the Pepper Jack cheese because they're fighting over a grilled cheese recipe. Like that was so obvious once I read it I was like duh but 
I thought it was really cute anyways, but still really disappointed in myself for not realizing it sooner. The next book I read I also gave a 4 out of 5 stars. It is Cami Garcia's Broken Beautiful Hearts. This follows Peyton, who is an aspiring soccer player. She just received a spot on her college team, so she's very excited to attend next year. She ends up discovering a secret about her boyfriend, and when she confronts him, things turn a little bit ugly, and she ends up taking a fall down the stairs, injuring her knee, which jeopardizes her spot on the team. When she tells people that she was pushed, they don't believe her, so she decides that she's going to go live with her uncle in a couple towns over in order to rehab her knee and focus on getting better. Then she meets a boy named Owen who she can't seem to stop thinking about and it's like the story of that. I related to Peyton so much in this book because I also received a career ending basketball injury so I definitely understood her feeling of lost identity and what she was going through. I also related a lot to the way that her relationship ended. It was very similar to the way my relationship ended other than the falling down the stairs that didn't happen to me but it still really sucked. I really liked how she stood up to her abusive ex boyfriend and wouldn't take shit from him but I do wish that she had asked for help when he started getting obsessive and stalking her. I also really liked how this dealt with the aftermath of speaking up for yourself and I think that it can be very scary when people don't believe you when you know that you're telling the truth but I really like that Peyton never backed down because she knew what happened to her. I really like how she had such a strong support system around her not only from Owen but also from her parents, her cousins, and then the people that she met at her new school. I think that it was really great to show that. I also really liked Owen as a love interest. I liked their slow burn dance around their relationship and I like how he never pushed her into doing anything that she didn't want to. I also really like how he helped her work through her emotions of losing her father and I also would just like to say that the twins were 100% my favorite part of this story. They were just so adorable and lovable. The biggest complaint I have of this book was the girl on girl hate, especially because it was like the mean cheerleader trope kind of situation going on. I'm never a fan of that, so I didn't like it in this book. But I did really like the positive female friendship between Grace and Peyton. I loved how they were always standing up for each other. Overall, very quick, easy, fluffy read, but still dealt with some heavier topics in a really well done way. So four out of five stars. The next book that I have I'm not going to talk too much about because I really did not like this book, but it is Finding Cinderella by Colleen Hoover. I gave this a one out of five stars. It follows a girl named Six and a boy named Daniel who have sex in a maintenance closet it when they are in high school. Years later they meet again. They don't realize that each other are who they are and they end up in this relationship and it's just very toxic and I don't like it and it's just not a good time. I would not recommend reading this book if you are a person. <laughs> I was really disappointed in this book because I really liked Hopeless and I'm usually okay with Colleen Hoover books. I'll usually rate them like 3.5 or higher, but I was really not a fan of this. There was just so much like negativity sex-wise in this book. Like the girl six has sex with six guys and she tells the boy that and then she won't stop talking about how much of a slut she was. And it's just like, th th that's not it. You know, like you can sleep with as many people as you want. You're not a slut. Stop. And just the main characters, both of them, just piss me off so much. The things that they do and the things that they say to each other, just, it's not good. It's just, teenagers should not be reading this. People should not be reading this. It just should not be a book in general. I'm sorry, that's just my thoughts. Don't read this. Next book that I have is Casey West's Listen to Your Heart. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 16 year old Kate who is very shy. Her best friend Alana convinces her to join the school's podcast class as her elective. Kate ends up being assigned as one of the hosts for the podcast and she ends up getting a mysterious caller phoning in asking for advice on his crush. She discovers that it is a boy named Diego Martinez. She's pretty sure that he is talking about Alana and Alana just so happens to like Diego as well. So she decides to intervene a little bit and you know, give out that love advice. So Kate is very excited for Alana until she starts hanging out with Diego a little bit more and she discovers that she might like him a little bit too. So she needs to decide whether or not she's going to be loyal to her best friend 
or follow her heart and it's like the story of that. Casey West books are definitely very fluffy. They're always advertised as like cute contemporary summertime reads and this definitely was that. I liked Kate as a main character for the most part but at times she kind of annoyed me because a lot of the things that happened in the book could have been easily avoided if she had just talked to Alana about her feelings. I really liked the friendship between Alana and Kate and I like how they didn't let a boy come between them in the end. I really like the family dynamics in this. It showed a very positive, healthy relationship between Kate and her parents but also Diego and his cousins. I was a fan of Diego but again a lot of the things that happened in this book could have just been easily avoided if they had all just had a freaking discussion for two seconds of their life. Overall cute fluffy summer read 3.5 out of 5. The final book that I read is Rules for Being a Girl by Candice Bushnell and Katie Kotungo and I gave those a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Marin who is in her senior year of high school. She's working very hard to get into her dream college. She has the constant support of her English teacher Mr. Bex. When he takes things a little bit too far one day she becomes uncomfortable. She ends up reporting him to the authorities but her school doesn't really believe her so now she has to deal with the consequences of speaking up for herself. This was a very quick read. I ended up finishing it in one sitting. I really loved the editorial that Marin wrote. I think that it was the best part of the book. I really like how her family supported her wholeheartedly when she came out with her story. It kind of really pissed me off the way that others reacted to it, especially because of the way that this book ended. It didn't really make sense why nobody believed her story. I think that this book was very predictable, which kind of sucked, but I did like the overall message behind it, so 3.5 out of 5. Alright everybody, so that was my part 3 of 3 wrap-up for May 2020. I have the links to the other two wrap-ups down below if you want to check those out, as well as the vlog where I talk about my three contemporary thon reads. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.